Hello everybody, this is Coding Made Easy coming to you with your second Allegro HD tutorial. In this tutorial we will be learning about the core functions of Allegro that you will run into sooner or later in the in while programming in Allegro. I will be showing you how to use all these functions later on in my tutorials. I'm just introducing you to them and what they do in your program. Now for starters, if you haven't learned the basics of Allegro or anything, or you haven't learned the basics of C++, my bad, then this tutorial series is probably not for you, and you should learn the basics first. Now, if you have watched my first Allegro series, you should still watch this series because you will surprisingly find some things that you will learn and that will be interesting to you. Anyways, to start off, let's look at um, Allegro.h. Basically, this is an include statement to include the Allegro library into our program. Without Allegro.h, then we won't be able to use any of the functions or any of the commands or any of the variables that are built into Allegro. So we need to include Allegro into our programs. Now int main is straightforward from the basics. It's the main function where everything runs through. So we I don't need to explain that. First of all, we have Allegro underscore init. Basically, it's um init stands for initialize, and it basically initialize Allegro so you can use the functions built into Allegro. Without um Allegro init, you cannot use any of these things that are based off Allegro. Second of all, we have install keyboard. It uh, basically installs the keyboard into your program so you can use certain keyboard, you can use all your keyboard functions, your keys or whatever to manipulate the program whether it be through input or anything else. And I believe that I'm not sure if it includes a joystick as well um, or the gamepad. I'm going to have to check into that but I will be teaching gamepad tutorials as well. So the next one is in install mouse. A mouse it basically allows you to use a mouse pointer in your programs. For whatever reason you need them, the mouse function is there. Install timer. Installing timer basically is mainly used for frames per second, but you can also manipulate it to become a countdown timer to see how long you've been playing the game, so just um such as total game time and certain things like that. So the timer routines are very important. Install sound is basically to implement sound in your game, whether it be sound effects, it could be background music, and you can do it from a um a you can include WAV files or MIDI files into your program or with external libraries you can include different file formats whether it be dot um org files or mp3 files or another file type the color depth and i don't know mu much about it you can search about it in the allegro manual but to be on the safe side you would set this to 32 make sure it is a power of two as if it's not a power of two then you won't get the proper results note that setting the color depth has to go before set GFX mode. If you do not put it before, then you will run into a lot of errors. If you want to test it out for yourself, you can. It's up to you. But when you get into drawing graphics and stuff, if you put this after the GFX mode, you will see the problems. Now, the GFX mode is basically saying the graphics mode. And this is what creates the window right here. So in the first parameter, you set the actual mode that you want the window to show up on so uh, if you put window then it will actually show a game window without if you don't put window then it will show in full screen mode so if you don't want it full screen mode then we'll put windowed and preferably I don't like full screen mode so I put windowed but you can create an option if um within your game if you would like the players to play full screen mode or non full screen mode the second parameter is uh, the screen width in pixels whether it be full screen or windowed mode it will 
your screen size is a certain amount of pixels wide and a, per a certain amount of pixels high right just to end in full screen mode then your pixels will probably be bigger or larger than in window mode so I want it to be 800 pixels wide and 600 pixels long and this stands for the virtual width and virtual height you could research this but we will not be using it because it is not effective people might say it's good for screen scrolling and such but trust me you will not want to use this method and I'll show you alternate methods to do different tricks when it comes to programming and you'll become a better programmer that way also last but not least set window title it's just the title of the window now you're asking what might that be well let me show you an example it says Allegro made easy in the window title um, if you see right here it says Allegro made easy so it changes the title of the window to the game name that you would like to specify if not then it will show the actual project name sometimes the project name is not the same as the actual game name so you want to set them apart If you set the window title then you change the title of the window itself so that it's different it displays different than the actual project name and let's go down to read key read key basically reads a key on the keyboard and it will pause the whole program until a key has been read that means it will pause the program until somebody presses a key on the keyboard to continue throughout the program without this the program will just run through quickly and it will open and close as an example if I run this the window flashes it opens and then it closes because it goes straight to Allegro underscore exit which I'll explain after then it goes to return zero which means that it returns exit success which means that the program has ended so we need the read key to pause the program so we can actually see the results of our program so far once you get into game loops and stuff such then we won't need this for regulating opening and closing windows but for now we will have it there Allegro underscore exit for people who have watched my old tutorials, this is a new function to them. And for people that are watching this for the first time, this is a new function to you as well. Allegro init has a built-in function that when it reaches end of main, it will call the Allegro underscore exit function. This is not required, but if you want to be on the safe side and for cross-platform um, compat compatibility or backwards compatibility, you might want to add an Allegro exit just to be on the safe side for to um, to fully prevent memory leaks. Memory leaks are the worst, and you don't even know they're there, and they can slowly build up and slow down your computer. And in my last tutorials, I didn't really explain how to get rid of memory leaks in our program, which was a bad habit that I should have taught you. So don't forget to put Allegro underscore exit in your program. It's just one more line of code. So it's really not that drastic. Last but not least is end of main. End of main clat um basically what it does oh before I even explain anything else before end of main, notice that there's no semicolon at the end. That is not a mistake. I repeat, do not put a semicolon at the end of main. For some reason it's not supposed to be there. Uh the the reason why it's not supposed to be be there is because end of main changes the way the main function works it's not like a regular function uh, when you're running programs on different types of operating systems they operate differently different code runs differently on different operating systems depending on how they read it and stuff like that that's why when you're learning the basics of um, C++ instead of putting if you're writing a string, instead of putting backwards slash n, it's better if you put ndl because ndl can run on, is read the same way on every single operating system. So, um, the same goes for Allegro. When you do Allegro, end of main will change it. Um, Allegro functions and Allegro programs cannot be read the same way on every other operating system. So what end of main does is to change the main function to suit the needs of the operating system so that your program can run effectively and efficiently on that operating system so it's cross-platform. 
you could do without end of main, but you'd have to put preprocessor directives in order to manipulate the main function to suit the operating system's needs, which is a pain that nobody needs to go through. So put end of main at the end of your programs or it will not work properly. So that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed using the core functions and we will be using a lot of these functions later on in the tutorials. For your next tutorial it will be about closing the window with the X button because if you have noticed um, when I open the game window you cannot close the game window with the X button. It doesn't show up, it doesn't show light it up or anything. So I will show you a way to show the X button so that you can close the game window in that manner. So thanks for watching these tutorials. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope you look forward to the next video which is coming very soon. So thanks for watching and bye.